So Lord, good night, greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. It is a great joy and privilege once again, beloved and friends, to be here tonight to minister the word of God. I trust the Lord everyone is in good health and happiness, regardless of our situation or world. As I always say, it's beloved and friends, uh, Jesus says, Lo, I'm with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you, even unto the end of this world. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that great? Isn't that mighty, my friends, uh, that we have an assurance uh, that God will be with us even unto the end of this world? You know, he says in his words, uh, uh, 2,000 years ago, when he walked upon the face of the earth, uh, my friends, uh, he healed the sick and he raised the dead uh, and he made the lame walk and blind see and perform miraculous works uh, when he walked upon the face of this earth. Uh, my friends, uh, when the purpose Jesus came, he came to die for you and for me. He shed his blood uh, so that we can have life and life more abundantly. You see, my friends, uh, when mankind sinned against God, when God created man, he created man perfect in the garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, and they were created perfect. God created Adam and Eve, but because of sin, because they, of disobedience, there was a separation between man and God. But all these years, God was looking for a way to reconcile man back to himself. And that is why, because there was a separation between man and God. You see, God cannot deal with sin. Man nature became sinful and God had to send his only begotten son Jesus into this world to die for you and for me, my friends, because he loves us and he wants us to be reconciled back to God. Let me explain further. You see, when God created man, he breathed in his nostril and man became a living soul. So we are part of God. Our soul cannot die. This body of flesh Blood and bone can die, but our soul will never die. It will have to live on for all eternity. But the question is, the question is, in this flesh, we cannot please God. That is why Jesus came and he died for all mankind. To set men free from the work of darkness. To liberate man so that they can be reconciled back to him one day in heaven. My friends, why am I saying this tonight? We need to understand in the world we live in today, we have about 8 billion people in this world. And sad to say only about less than 1 billion people are saved in this world. About 7 billion people in this world don't have a clue of what is really happening in this world. My friends, this world is a very, very sick world. And in this world, mankind have a lifespan about uh, a three score and ten, which is 70 years old. And by the reason of strength, uh, a few of us get 80, 90 or 100. The queen got 96. Very few get those years. But uh, it is not the end of life. When we die, where will you spend eternity? There is only two places we can spend eternity, my friends, and that is heaven or hell. The choice is yours to make a, a note, my friends, and make sure we know where we're going. This world we live in is controlled by the devil Satan. He is in control of this world presently and he is ruling this world. The lawlessness and things that happen in this world. The state is set for the rule and reign of the Antichrist. Very soon, the Antichrist will rule this world for seven years, which we call the tribulation period. I'm scattering all over tonight. For seven years, and we call it the new world order or one world government. He will force the world to have one world currency. No more euro, no more pounds, no more different dollars anywhere. There will be one currency ruling the world. He will bring all the religion into one. Is that possible? He says, Pastor, that is not possible. It is possible. Very soon, the things I'm telling you will come to pass very soon. This world is heading for destruction and only a small percentage of people and preachers know what is really happening in the world and what will happen shortly. My friends, I mentioned in one of my messages when I prophesied, within 15 months from now, the stage is set for something to happen in this world. 
The word, this is the last generation. The generation span is seven years and we have ended. This is the last generation, my friends, and we are heading towards destruction, the rule and the reign of the Antichrist. My friends, it is important that we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and we get saved. It's important, my loved ones out there, my friends and family and relatives, you are saying, I'm saying to you tonight, make sure that you are saved because the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is very near. The only way you can make it, you must accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because all of us are born in sin and no matter how we try to live a good life, we cannot make it because all our righteousness are like filthy rags in the sight of God. We cannot save ourselves and that is why Jesus came and died for mankind to bridge the gap between man and God to reconcile us back to himself. Tonight, my friends, salvation is a gift. Salvation is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Salvation is a gift from God. Jesus Christ died that you and me can have life and life more abundantly. Father God, tonight, I pray that you dip me in the river of liquid fire of the Holy Spirit. Anoint my lips, anoint my tongue, anoint my voice, anoint my body, anoint my soul, anoint my mental faculties as I minister your words tonight. Your words will go forth on the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit that many will be healed, many will be saved, and many will be delivered, and many will be set free, and many will come to know the Lord God as Savior. Let's give Lord a big hand I just had a little chat with you tonight. Welcome, beloved and friends. Those of you listening to me from your living room, from your dining room, from your kitchen, from your car, from your office, in church, or right here, God bless you richly. There is a tremendous blessing awaits you tonight. And my prayer tonight, uh, that God will bless you in every area of your life, uh, whether physically, spiritually, socially, materially, financially, educationally, every area of your life, I pray sincerely from my heart uh, that God will bless you and prosper you. I pray that God will bless your marriage, <coughs> God will bless your homes. God will bless your children. God will bless your family. God will bless your business. God will bless you on your job. God will bless your finances. Tonight I build a hedge around God's people and I cover everyone under the precious blood of Jesus. I build a hedge around your life. Every spirit of witchcraft and obia and demonic forces and evil that come against you, I destroy under the precious blood of Jesus because the blood of Jesus is powerful. The blood of Jesus is efficacious. And the blood is so powerful, the blood of Jesus repellent that destroys every yoke and every bondage and every fetter and every evil, every generational curse. I break tonight every blights against your life. I destroy. I release true peace and joy and happiness in a sin sick world my friends and I urge you tonight if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior get saved make sure your name is written in the Lamb's book of life hallelujah my friends because very soon the trumpet of the Lord will sound and the dead Christ shall rise and those who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord God in the air are you ready tonight my friends, the final sign before the rapture is about to happen. My friends, but this may surprise you what I have to say tonight. The final sign before the rapture, the Bible tells us that this present, the Bible tells us, my friends, that this present world, this present this present world will be wrapped up, wrapped up, and there will be a new heaven and a new earth very soon. There, there will be no sorrow, sickness, nor death, my friends, except uh, this world passes away. My friends, the new world will not come, my friends, but something must happen before this take place, my friends. Yes, we must hear the sound of the trumpet. Yes, the last trumpet trumpet of the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 15 tonight. 
verse 51 to 53 tells us, Behold, behold, I show you a mystery. Mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be all changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, my friends. The last trumpet, the last trumpet for the trumpet shall sound. The trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Yes, and we shall be changed. We shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption. Yes. Yes, my friends, and this mortal must put on immortality. Yes, my friends, tonight uh, the angel of the Lord will blow the trumpet uh, as Jesus appears in the sky. And we who believe, uh, we who believe in him, uh, yes, uh, dead or alive will defy the law of gravity and be caught up uh, with him in the sky. A cutting up uh, of the saints to be with the Lord is what we call the rapture tonight. Tonight, my friends, First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, as I said this morning, for the, the Lord himself, uh, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, uh, with the voice of the archangel, yes, uh, and with the trumpet of God, my friends, uh, and the dead in Christ, uh, the dead in Christ shall rise first, uh, and then uh, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, my friends, together with them in the clouds, uh, we to meet the Lord in the air, hallelujah, and so shall we ever be with the Lord God Almighty. The sound of the trumpet is symbolic tonight in the Old Testament, my friends. It was used to call the people to gather at, 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 at a signal to move or to call to war. Psalms 81, my friends, verse 3 to 5 tells us tonight, blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed, the time appointed in all our solemn fast, my friends uh, they and also the, the, in Leviticus 23 and 24 tells us uh, my friends uh, speak unto the children of Israel uh, saying uh, in the seventh month uh, in the seventh month, in the first day, the month shall be, we shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets. My friends, the holy convocation, convocation, even the strong walls of Jericho were brought down after the, after seven constructive days of blowing trumpets. Joshua chapter 6, verse 4 to 20 tells us tonight, the time prophecy show that the sound of the trumpet precedes the day of the Lord. My friends, Joel chapter 2 verse 1 tells us, blow the trumpet in Zion, blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land uh, tremble, tremble for the day of the Lord is coming. The day of the Lord is coming for it is at hand. It is at hand. The sound of the trumpet uh, that we will hear before the rapture is also our Alarm for us believers to call us into the new life that awaits us, my friends and beloved. The blowing of the trumpet will mark our transition from this world of sin into the kingdom of God where we will receive the reward for all we have done here on earth. Our, our mortality will be swallowed up into immortality or mortal into immortality. Those who will be changed up in the rapture, be caught up in the rapture, will have a new body, an eternal body, a body that does not get sick or tired, my friends, a body that does not know sin. Yes, my friends, a body that does not uh, require a doctor. Therefore, people who have always been healthy, this is something you don't really yearn for quite like this. Someone has to struggle with their health for years, my friends. But when the rapture happens in a moment, you will have a body which will never, never, ever get sick again. One and no one on one occasion, I was teaching in a Bible study regarding the rapture. 
rapture and the end times. And a young man asks me, what is the final sign of the rapture? Before the rapture, what is the last thing to happen? Night before the rapture. My friends, a young man had his misconception. Misconception, some cosmic event will happen before the rapture. But that's not what the Bible tells us, my friends. The Bible tells us that no one, not even Jesus Christ himself, know the day nor the hour when he will when it will take place, except the Father Himself. My friends, Matthew chapter 24. Verse 26 tells us, but of that day and hour, know it no man, no, no, know it no man, not even the angels of heaven, but my father, only, only my father. This was come as a surprise to the world because there will be no prayer notification apart from what we have in scriptures, my friends. There is no final sign you should be looking for. The weather patterns are not going to change there won't be any shooting stars in the sky my friends there is no cosmic shift or change that will notify us of the rapture my friends and beloved there is no final sign before the rapture you should be looking for you should be looking for what does it tells us my friends we must live in the consciousness of who we are in God because we do not know when the Son of God will appear to take us home. Hallelujah. Our lives must be a reflection of love and holiness at all times, my friends and beloved, because we cannot tell exactly when the end will come. My friends, Matthew chapter 24, verse 42 tells us, Watch therefore, watch therefore, for ye know not what our your Lord to it come, my friends, tonight. As we patiently wait for the day or to come, there is a, 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 a posture we must maintain, my friends. First Corinthians chapter 50, verse 50, it says, what does it say? Therefore, my beloved, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Hallelujah. For as much as you know that your father is not in, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We should live as Christ lived in this person, in his first coming. The Bible tells us that he went about doing good. Hallelujah. Our lives must reflect the nature of God. Let's give him a hand tonight. We should live in passing day as though Jesus will return on that day, my friends, for a moment, for one moment tonight. If you know, if you know Jesus was coming tonight how much different different your day be that it how much are we meant to live each day with the expectation of his coming my friends allow me tonight to ask you some questions my friends and beloved if you know the rapture will happen today will you still not forgive the people who wrong you my friends, will you not commit the sin that you have committed today? My brothers and sisters tonight, live a holy life. Live a holy life. A life of expectation where the rapture, whenever the rapture happens today or, the, or, 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 or a year from now, it does not matter. What matters is your relationship with God Almighty. Your relationship with Jesus Christ, my friends. Take a step away from attempting to predict this and focus on your relationship with the Lord tonight. Are you following his commandments tonight? Are you obedient to his word tonight? Do you love God with all your heart, my friends, tonight? With all your soul, with all your being tonight? Do you love him? Do you love sin more than you love God tonight? Do you love pleasure? 
more than you love God tonight. My friends, the truth is it is no one thing to say with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, but it is another thing entirely to obey his will and commands, my friends. The walk, the walk and talk must go together. Don't just say you love God, act in a manner that shows you, you love him tonight. Don't just say Jesus Christ is Lord with your mouth. Live your life in a way that shows Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life. Give him a hand tonight. That is not correct. The God of this Bible, my friends, has given us a way, a way tonight, my friends. We as children should live our lives. For the God of the Bible is, is a God that likes to get up, get up all in, in his children business. My friends, every aspect of your life, God has a way. He wants you to, to conduct yourself tonight. Yes, in this Bible, you will find instructions about how you should live as a single person. My friends, in this Bible tonight, we will find instructions on how God wants us to behave in our marriage. Yes, my friends, in this Bible, you will find instructions of how God wants you to handle your money, your finances, your parenting, and much more tonight. Are you hearing me tonight? A child of God needs to believe in a particular way tonight. I am not saying for one second that a child of God never sins. David sinned. My friends, Abraham sinned. Moses sinned. My friends, and all of these men were still great men of God because they, they trust God because they repented when they sin even when we sin we are expected to behave in a particular way tonight and repent for our sins because Jesus died for our sins and asked for forgiveness my friends this is the one of the key difference between the saved and the unsaved the unsaved when they sin, they carry on with their life. And when they, they save sin, they ask for forgiveness. If they sin consciously or unconsciously, like David did in Psalms 51, when we, we, when we teach that the God accepts all people, no matter what we are or not, conveying the true nature of God. The truth is this tonight. This is God's universe and he created it. This is God's universe and he will only he will destroy it one day. This is God's universe and he will one day judge it. He will destroy it. He will judge it. There, the, the, and there the Bible reveals to, to you and to me that the God of this Bible has a standard tonight. Yes, my friends. He said, and we don't go to God imposing our opinions and our desires and our standard upon Him. My friends, the Bible clearly reveals to us the standards that he has set and we see in the Bible records many stories that reveal God rejection of certain big behaviors and lifestyle and even and every being, every being Satan was rejected for his pride, Adam and even our parents were rejected by God for disobeying his commands, my friends, Cain who offered his sacrifice, my friends Friends, the Lord, the Lord God Almighty rejected in these last days. My friends, we must be discerning. Discerning, we must stand by the words which have been spoken to us by God Almighty. If we are not grounded in God's knowledge and are in, in, in sensitive of the Spirit of God, we will be tossed about by the wind of every new teaching. My friends, there are lots of false teachers and doctrines flying all over the place. My friends, if you do not know what the Word of God says for yourself, everything will look true to you tonight. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 13 and 14 tells us, God says in His words, but evil people and impostors will go from bad to worse as they deceive others and are themselves deceived tonight. But as for you, my friends, continue to, to 
what you have learned and found to be true tonight because you know you know from whom you learned it my friends tonight as we can see millions of people are still walking in darkness in fact billions in this world and we have been sent to bring them into the light into the light there is no other time to do the work of ministry go out my friends preach the gospel get men saved tonight and fill with the Holy Ghost fill with the Holy Spirit that God kingdom and order keep advancing as we wait for the trumpet song that will take us to be with the Father forever my friends the final of this whole epic episode tonight in human history is explained well in John chapter 14 verse 1 and 4 it tells us tonight do not let your your heart be troubled hallelujah ye believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions many rooms if that were not so my friends would I have I would have told you I am going to prepare a place for you and if I go to prepare a place for you yes I will come back I will come back and take you to be with me that you may be also where I am hallelujah you know the way to the place where I'm going tonight. My friends, stop focusing on signs and trying to pinpoint a date, my friends, and focus. Focus on the relationship with Jesus Christ. Ultimately, that is the only thing that will matter for all eternity. My friends, are you hearing me? The only thing that will matter for all eternity is your salvation. Tonight, are you saved? Do you accept that you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is your name written in the Lamb's book of life are you born again did you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior did you repent of your sins if you accept Jesus and you repent from your sins, I assure your name is written in the Lamb's book of life and you will not miss the rapture. But if you are not saved, you will miss the rapture and you have to face up with the Antichrist who will rule the world very soon for seven years. The world will plunge into the seven year tribulation period. My friends, there will be chaos and confusion in this world. Chaos and confusion. You will, will not be able to to bear it if you miss the rapture my friends you will be very hard for you to live during the reign of the antichrist and live as a child of god they will cut you off completely my friends the bible says no man will be able to buy or sell unless he receive the mark of the beast the antichrist 666 the world is heading for a new world order a one world government a one world currency a one world religion very soon it will happen my friends the united nation my friends will take control the 195 sovereign nation many presidents and prime ministers and leaders will lose control making the states ready and set for the antichrist to take over the world my friends very soon these things are happening i'm preaching my life out i hope people are listening i'm very sorry that many cannot hear this message tonight but please pass it on my friends our world is in chaos very soon the world will hit with my, my EMP. It's, it's a very important, my friends, tonight. But I very soon, within a week, within six days, it's very important for America to close down all the railroads right now. Shut it down, whether you call it strike or not, because when that EMP hits, those uh, this road rate will, will, will warp, will, will get soft and warp and cause a lot of corruption and accidents and, and chaos and confusion. The best thing is to, to close it down for now, for this week, my friends, because you can save many lives and save many billions. Don't worry about the two billion dollar. You will save more than that if you do the right thing, my friends. With the EMP will knock out the electrical grid very soon. My friends, this world will plunge back about 200 years back when we use a bottle lamp. When we had to rub to stone 
to, 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 to light the fire and so many things. You cannot imagine what this world would have plunged back to, my friends, because of the electrical grid. What will happen, my friends? <coughs> God will destroy this world. This world with fire and brimstone very soon. We are living in the very last days. We, this world does not have very long more as it always says. My friends, we are heading to destruction. We are heading for chaos and confusion. We are heading for an economy, an economical collapse. Which I say is, I'm not the prophet of gloom and doom. But I'm here to tell you tonight, make sure you're saved. Make sure you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and repent of your sins and accept Jesus and make your salvation secure tonight. My friends and beloved, I trust that you pass this message on to a friend or a cousin or a neighbor, someone and listen to this word. My friends, listen to this prophet. These things I'm telling you is true tonight. I can see in the spirit world. I can tell you exactly what is coming. My friends, I do not want to scare people, but we are living in desperate times. We are living in trial times. We are living in a time when this world will plunge into starvation and famine very soon. Many things across the world will happen, my friends, but the most important thing is to make your salvation secure. Hallelujah. Do you think why so many pilots have taken all the retirement. Can you imagine in the skies when a Christian pilot is flying the plane and that pilot is taking the rapture, the plane is coming on with all, all those passengers who are not seen, born up and died and go to hell. Those who born in the rapture, my friends, there will be chaos on the streets with confusion when the rapture takes place. Many cars and trains will crash and planes and cars and buses and airplanes. There will be mass confusion when the rapture takes place, which will happen very soon. Are you prepared? Are you ready, my friends and beloved? Hallelujah. I trust the Lord that this word has been a blessing to your heart and you listen and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. My friends and beloved, I did not forget to pray for you. And those of you tonight who are listening to me from your living room, from your dining room, from your kitchen, from your car, from your office, from church, on the street with your phone or right here. My friends, whatever sickness you have tonight, if you have cancer, you have AIDS, you have COVID, you have diabetes, you have a heart problem, a liver problem, a lungs problem, a blood issue, a blood dialysis problem. If you're blind, you're deaf, you're lame, what the case may be, you're suffering from depression oppression, frustration, anxiety, if you have a migraine headache, if you're demon possessed, if you have pain all over your body, in your joints, I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is still in the healing business, for he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, by his stripes, we are healed tonight, I am healed, you are healed, we are healed, all we need tonight is a little faith, as a grain of mustard seed tonight, and you will receive your miracle from the hands of God, is there someone tonight whom the doctor has given up and says you will not live, you will die. I'm here to tell you as a man of God tonight, you will not die, but you will live to fulfill purpose and calling and destiny because God has not finished with you as yet. You will live and not die. Let's give the Lord a big hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Are you ready for your healing? Are you ready to be saved? Are you ready to be delivered tonight? Are you ready to be set free from satanic works tonight? Are you ready to set free from the Antichrist tonight? My friends and beloved, you can have your salvation tonight. It's a gift from God. My friends, your healing also is from God because he wants you to walk in divine health. I'm going to send for that anointing tonight. Wherever you are right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, be healed in the name of Jesus. Be set free by the power of the Holy Spirit. I see many are healed, many are saved, many are delivered, many are set free from all manner of sicknesses and pain and disease and infirmities and evil and every work of darkness. Let's give the Lord a big hand for me.
Hallelujah. Let's thank God for the healing. Lord, I thank you for the healings tonight. I thank you for deliverance. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for setting the captives free tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, beloved. Write me, text me, call me, let me know what God has done for you. And make sure that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Make sure you accept the gift of God tonight. Because Jesus says in his words, he is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. My friends tonight, heed my warning. Repent and be saved before it is too late. God bless you richly. It's a joy and great privilege, my friends and beloved, to be here tonight to minister the word of God. Do have a wonderful sweet night dress in Jesus' name. God bless you richly. I love you. Great and very much in the love of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.